because I know uh, personally mm -hmm. uh, in my school mm -hmm. uh, some people uh, not all not everyone but some people they they think that uh, Tunisia oh they they they're like uh, they're like Egypt you know they, they mistreat no. women no no at all at all at all at all at Right now, I'm on my way to the capital city of Tunisia, Tunis. Today is a very special day in Tunisia because today, the 13th of August, is the National Women's Day. And this year's National Women's Day, Tunisian women from all over the country have gathered at the capital in support of the new law for women's right of equal inheritance and the depenalization of homosexuality. But before we get on to our modern day issues, it is worth mentioning that inequalities between genders are long-standing issues in many countries. However, some countries are more in dire need of progress in human rights. Take for example Saudi Arabia, a place where homosexuals are thrown off of tall buildings as punishment for being who they are, and women are publicly thrown rocks at as punishment for sleeping with another man. During the French occupation, Tunisian women were not able to get a proper education and their everyday lives were deathly tiring and dreadful. Women in the countryside had to work in the fields, take care of the children and the house, and serve their men. But this all ended in 1956, when Habib Bourguiba, the former president of ours, was put into power after several independence movements that forced the French to leave. Tunisia had become a republic, and among many of those independence movements were calls for equality among the sexes. Bourguiba was one of those people. And as leader, he put laws ensuring education and health for all, and the past inequalities would no longer be in place. Um, under Bourguiba, school was mandatory up to the age of 15, I think. So, uh, especially for the countryside, this was very important. Little girls were not uh, uh, kept uh, at home, but sent to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was mandatory if parents uh, did not send the, 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 the girls at school, they can uh, be arrested mm -hmm. by this time. So it was very good. At my time also, uh, since uh, primary school, it was um, mixed. We were uh, with the boys in the same classroom. So uh, I had no problem into my relation with men in general and when uh, I, I speak for myself I speak for all the people of my generation so this I think it's an excellent thing okay uh, that uh, is not really enough to say and say and say a thousand times thank you Borgiva for what you have done to us he started by officially making polygamy illegal men were not allowed under any circumstances to marry more than one partner. جبنا القانون هاك الدمان هذاك اللي قلنا عليه دولة أولا القانون في يدنا كي نصحح فيه يولي قانون يتعدى اه صححت في القانون هذا كون امرأة واحدة يكفي After this radical transition many more radical changes came with it 
But despite Burgiba's tremendous efforts to make Tunisia equal for both of the sexes, there were still many inequalities that were not covered under legislation. In 2011, Tunisia had a series of massive protests against the second president of Tunisia, Ben Ali. And this resulted in the Jasmine Revolution, which sparked the entire Arab Spring. So you also lived through that, and how, how was that like? How was it like as a woman to yes. live under the reign of Ben yes. Ali? Yes, um, I have uh, to say the truth. You know, what I uh, was glad of was that Ben Ali did not suppress any of the um, uh, any of the benefit that we had uh, from uh, Bourguiba time, mm -hmm. okay? And plus, nearly every year uh, we have uh, the um, Women Day, Tunisian Women Day, which is the 16th of uh, August. He would uh, uh, make it as a, uh, an official uh, day for all of us, and he will add some benefit to mm. the uh, Tunisian uh, woman. This was nice. And plus, uh, what I can truly say is inter Ben Ali, we felt really safe, you know? F safe in day-to-day uh, -day life, you know? You can go take your car and uh, go up to uh, two, three o'clock in the morning and drive it with it uh, within a problem. I remember one day it was uh, uh, by maybe three o'clock in the morning, and uh, I was uh, going back home on my way from a wedding, and all of a sudden I, I felt that um, a, a car with two guys, maybe he was, uh, they were drank more than anything, was annoying me. So I stopped by the first roundabout and I, it was a policeman there and I asked him, I said, please, you know, I think uh, uh, this uh, car uh, uh, is following me and uh, I'm a little bit scared. Oh, he said, don't worry, you know the guy, he took his moto and he took me back home. Mm -hmm. So this was under Ben Ali and uh, we as a woman uh, uh, felt very safe, okay. you know, security was mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to the best, really. Mm -hmm. After we had gained our freedom and democracy, things were still not advancing. The political party of Islamist nature and Nahda, the awakening in Arabic, became the most popular Islamic conservative party which very quickly gained majority seats in our parliament. Due to their radical fundamentalist Islamic beliefs, they do not support equality between men and women. They want to retain laws in conformity of Sharia law. In particular, Anatha are against equality of inheritance between male and female siblings from their deceased parents and outvoted all other parties in the proposition to depenalize homosexuality. This law will divide us. Women in Tunisia aren't oppressed. Actually, the opposite is true, and now they want to pretend that women will be more powerful than men. It's just a tool they're using, but it won't mean progress for people. Instead, it will have the opposite effect. I don't want homosexuality. I don't want men marrying men and women marrying women. I don't want these strange freedoms. They are destructive. This demonstration comes two days before one planned on August 13th, billed as a celebration of women's rights in Tunisia. Tunisia's president is expected to comment on this subject that same day. Many will be listening carefully. I have arrived at Tunis, and it's still as crowded and lively and beautiful in its own way as I remember. This is Boshara Belhaj Hamida. She is the president of the Commission for Individual Liberties and Equalities. She is the one who led the team in writing and publishing a report on the 8th of June 2018, outlining the laws concerning inheritance and homosexuality, which also inspired this protest. Here are a few highlights I managed to film during my time there.
Um, why did you come here? What is the protest for? Yes. Uh, I came here because it's a big day for us, especially for women, you know. It's for freedom, our freedom, and the future of our uh, children, and next generation, and the generation after. What do you think of Nahva's views of, uh, I of women? I think uh, uh, it's still the same. Since day one, it didn't change. Although they change their uh, the way they talk and they change the way they uh, they walk, but uh, their mind is still the same. You know, um, dealing with the woman as a second-class citizen, and we are a first-class citizen, and will be always a first-class citizen with men equal. What are issues that Tunisian women face today? Um, many issue, but uh, I think it's uh, uh, is related not only to Tunisian women, but to women in general, which is you know uh, in work to have the same salary, in uh, in. Um, in day-to-day uh, -day life and uh, the problem that is, uh, let's say, according to the Sharia, okay, the, uh, the, the female should have, the men should have double the female and this is not acceptable, you know, by any means. And according to the Sharia, when my uh, father passed away, then my cousin soon inherited with me we, and my sister, which is very unfair. We should be the only three one inheriting from him. So this is what we are fighting for. I was always aware of the inequalities that women were suffering through here in Tunisia, and in recent years I felt the urge to take action. But unfortunately, due to various boundaries, I wasn't able to. That is why I was so incredibly happy to participate in this protest and see these people all gather for a common cause to fight for the equality between the sexes and the freedom for homosexuals to be who they are. And this is what I'm trying to say. That everywhere around the world, there are issues worth talking about and even fighting for. But I do believe that some issues deserve more attention than others. I am no feminist. But I do believe that women are oppressed and are discriminated against in the developing countries. This is why I asked the feminists, human rights activists, and countries far more advanced in human rights to focus on supporting changes in countries like mine or places like Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Qatar, India, Pakistan, Indonesia, etc. I fully understand that the West has its own problems that need to be dealt with or that they would prefer not to interfere with internal national affairs. I do understand that. But I also believe that these are equally pressing and severe issues. And there's no more time to waste. As a, as a, as a joke, just uh, you can say, say to your friend next time you meet them, as a joke, you know. Uh, and uh, this I was pleased because he was uh, not a young man, but an old man. Uh, they asked him and uh, they said to him, oh, um, he's a famous painter, you know, in Tunisia. And they asked him and they said, oh, what is the condition of the woman in Tunisia? And he said, well, for us men in Tunisia, 
easier. Just thinking of divorcing, they they will put us in jail. <laughs> to that point, Yanni, the woman is so so strong, you know, that thinking of uh, divorcing only we will be thrown into jail, you know. <laughs>